I have lived in East Grinstead for nearly 40 years. It's really, really friendly. The High Street's the oldest one in the country at that length. It's famous for its ley lines. Peter and Andre used to have a cafe. The Carol, Good King Wenceslas, was written here. Yeah, definitely Ashdown Forest. That was always good growing up as kids, wasn't it? It was, wasn't it, yeah. East Grinstead is famous for its diversity. We've got the Mormons, the Pagans, the Church of Scientology. Winnie the Pooh. Tom Cruise. Uh, the Queen Victoria Burns unit. The traffic. <laughs> I love it. We have this fantastic water tower in the car park opposite the theatre. I bet everyone says that. <laughs> Mark Steele's in town. Thank you very much. Welcome to Mark Steele's in town, which this week comes from the West Sussex beauty spot of East Grinstead. <laughs> where absolutely nothing strange or out of the ordinary... <laughs> Ever happens, though it is the only town in Britain where if someone tells you they're a Mormon, you think, oh, thank God you're one of the sane ones. <laughs> <laughs> because this is just a typical neighbourly little Sussex town with local amenities that you expect in somewhere this size, a co-op, a post office, a quick fit, the biggest Mormon church in Britain... <laughs> and the European headquarters of the Church of Scientology. All the, all the friendly stores that make a healthy local community. Some people have said to me uh, over the last few days, they've gone, you're not going to mention the Scientologists, are you? <laughs> no, I expect we'll do the show about all the other amazing things that make East Greenstead interesting. <laughs> like the newly restored fountain in the High Street. <laughs> One of the problems you have to get over here is when you're wandering about or sat in a cafe, you just look at other people and you think, are you one? <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe we were ruined by Zenu from another galaxy, so to sort ourselves out we have to sign up for a course in a secluded mansion? <laughs> or do you just live here because you've got a job in Argos? <laughs> Because you can't tell, because this is not a normal commuter town that's a few miles from the M25, because Tom Cruise doesn't visit Red Hill, does he? <laughs> he comes here, and if you look up news stories in East Grinstead, one of the first you find is that Scientologist John Travolta came here and tried to reserve a table for his entourage in Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> That doesn't happen in Dorking. <laughs> but you're used to this sort of thing. No, we're just a normal, quiet town with a water fountain. Nothing much happens. Sometimes Zenu comes for another galaxy, but credit where it's due, he keeps himself to himself. <laughs> it, it looks so innocent here. At first you think this is where you come to get away from the drama of Sussex. There's the wild abandon of Brighton, the bonfires of Lewis, the excitement of Gatwick Airport, the dangerous cliffs of Beachy Head. But there's the restored fountain and an unnecessary one-way system. And, <laughs> and that's enough for you. If you want craziness, you can go to Uckfield. <laughs> And you're used to well-known visitors. The book Secret East Grinstead, which I've got there, says everybody knows about the assassination of John F. Kennedy. But what is less well-known is that five months before he was assassinated, he stayed at Birch Grove near East Grinstead. <laughs> and it is strange how that's less well-known, isn't it? <laughs> they always show the same boring film of him being shot in Dallas, <laughs> but you never, ever see him checking in at a hotel in Birch Grove. Bias, that's what that is. It's the same with Jesus. Everyone knows with Jesus that he made a sermon on the mount, but what is less well known is that five months before he went to Lidl in East Grinstead and bought, <laughs> and bought an angle poised lamp. And this is the sort of headline you get here from the East Grinstead News. This, I promise I haven't changed the word of it. Fire brigades rescue woman's bum from railings. <laughs> They must be rushed off their feet here, the fire brigade. They must tell tales of how they survived the ordeal the way that New York firefighters do with 9-11. I saw good men going after that bum. 
right into the heart of the danger. They didn't think about their own lives. Bum rescue was the only thing on their minds. <laughs> It honestly looks like a place where nothing happens. There's a sweet little high street with proper Tudor buildings and they're not these fake Tudor buildings that you get in places like Tunbridge Wells where... hey! that look like they might stay up for a few more years. Yours, yours are real ones. One gas ring left on too long and the old high street's gone in 20 minutes. <laughs> And there's plenty that's happened here to make you fascinating. In the museum, the first thing after the entrance is a story on the wall about Winifred Wagner from East Grinstead. And it says, in 1915, she married Siegfried Wagner, Richard's son. She directed the Beirut festivals in Germany until 1944, becoming an intimate of its most prominent visitor, Hitler. <laughs> And then there's a picture of her smiling next to Hitler. So, well done, Winifred. She may have come from little old East Grinstead, but that didn't stop her becoming an intimate of Hitler. She just used that plucky East Grinstead spirit of welcoming someone, even if they're round the bend and part of a sinister organisation. <laughs> so... So everything here is calm and cosy. The high street looks like it should be from a 1960s children's show. <laughs> Even the stations on the way here sound like they're on the way to a made-up place in 1951. This train will call at Waldingham, Upper Wallingham, <laughs> Hurst Green and East Grinstead for the connecting service to the galaxy of Xenu. <laughs> Uh, interior Design Masters came here with Alan Carr. Did you all see that? Yes. And the contestants had to redesign two shops, 12 Middle Row and the shop next door that sold minerals and crystals. And someone told us that the day after they left, all the stuff the designers had put in had been thrown outside into a skip. <laughs> should have been on the programme as well with Alan Cargate. What was the point of going to all that trouble? <laughs> We'd have been better off going down the road and trying to redesign the Mormon temple. <laughs> and whenever you ask why there are so many strange things here, someone will answer, it's the ley lines. I bet if you call a plumber round here because your boiler's packed up, they arrive and go, yeah, well, you've got a ley line popping up through your radiator, you see. <laughs> That's your problem. I don't know who you've had dows in in here. They made a right mess of it, mate. <laughs> and as well as the ley lines, you're on the Meridian line that starts in Greenwich and goes to the South Pole, and you've got a stone by the council building that you can go to and stand with one foot either side of the Meridian. And if you look this up on the council's website, they're very proud. Their page about the Meridian stone on the Meridian line says, the Greenwich Meridian line is actually in the wrong place. <laughs> tracing the line as it passes through East Grinstead whilst using a GPS system will notice the markers appear to be some distance away. <laughs> you absolute fools! <laughs> uh, I was here when your, when your restored fountain was opened and it was a huge event for the town. The mayor gave a speech in his chains, the MP spoke. It's been a wonderful effort by all concerned that the restored fountain will provide a wonderful boost for the youth of the area because now, when they're bored, they can sip some water. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then he said, honestly, I wrote it down, he said... Now, the original fountain had dolphins carved on it, but they were stolen. <laughs> There's always something sinister lurking underneath here, isn't there? Why would anyone snap off a concrete dolphin from a fountain? But here you think, well, it is possible that it's to make up a wizard spell in the woods <laughs> with a potion that goes... Lingfield Goblin Concrete Dolphin Stolen on outing to local fountain. <laughs> the journalist John Sweeney said, East Grinstead is one of the most peculiar places in Britain. I certainly wouldn't go on a pub crawl there. <laughs> now, I don't agree with that. I think a perfect day out would be a pub crawl here and then a trip on the Bluebell Railway. Yeah. It's marvellous. 
This is the beautiful, idyllic little steam railway that you get to by going past the bins at the back of Sainsbury's. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> Many films have been made on that railway. Downton Abbey used it. The railway children, Wind in the Willows. You'll probably find that Star Wars was filmed there and the tea room was used as a Death Star. <laughs> Not only is it charming, it's also very handy for all those times when you really need to get to Halsted Canes. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's got three stops to three separate empty fields. It's brilliant. <laughs> And the other trick you play with the Bluebell Railway is to put hundreds of brown signs giving directions to the railway all round the town, all pointing in opposite directions. <laughs> and it's such a jolly, delightful English attraction in exactly the same charming way as another local source of joy, St Hill Manor. <laughs> this is the old country estate built in the 1790s that was owned by the Maharaja of Jaipur until it was bought in 1959 by science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbard, who then turned it into the headquarters of British Scientology. L. Ron Hubbard thought that humans have all developed anxieties and stress from our past lives, so we can think ourselves into a state of purity where we become free. And the more you succeed in this, the nearer you become to being a thetan, which is when you're close to becoming your true self. This doesn't mean you're all like it, that people like all of you round here go, oh, we've had a very good week because on Monday we had our first spring onions from the garden and then yesterday Derek became a thetan. <laughs> the methods for getting towards thetan status are interesting. One member described how the current leader of the church, David Miscavige, would punish executives who weren't succeeding by punching them, kicking them and making them play an extreme version of all-night musical chairs. <laughs> Now, you're all sitting there going, yeah, I've heard that sort of thing goes on <laughs> round the corner from where I live, cos you're used to it. But, E. Screen said, punishing people by making them play extreme all-night musical chairs isn't normal. <laughs> <laughs> what if one of the other contestants dancing round the chairs is John Travolta? No-one else is going to stand a chance, are they? <laughs> It's worth it, though, because if you reach the highest Thetan status, your spirit will last in this state forever. So in 1961, St Hill Manor began to be used for courses for followers of these theories, which L. Ron Hubbard called Dianetics, and the most committed followers move into the manor and they have to sign a contract with the church for one billion years. <laughs> I have no idea if this is legally binding. <laughs> but what I do wonder is, when you get down to the last million years of your billion, do you get a phone call from a call centre <laughs> that goes, Hello, Mr Watkins, I notice you're coming towards the end of your contract. <laughs> and I'd like to tell you we can offer very favourable conditions if you'd like to extend it for another billion years. <laughs> As well as further spiritual purity, we can offer free AA membership under pen. <laughs> I've read claims that the cost of all the courses you have to take to reach Thetan status can be £250,000. But when you break it down, that's only a penny every 20 years. <laughs> Tom Cruise has visited here several times. According to one article I read, he is said to have chosen a wing of St Hill Manor as his lockdown sanctuary, as reported in Tatler. Did anyone here see him? No. no? <laughs> Someone just said he's too small. <laughs> Very funny. I'm not going to think of anything better than that. So... <laughs> Out of 2,000 Scientologists in Britain, 1,000 of them live in East Grinstead. You're like their Mecca or Jerusalem or the Vatican. You're a holy site. You should make more of this. There should be stalls all along Church Street selling Tom Cruise candles and figurines. <laughs> Martel should sell sets of replica furniture using extreme all-night musical chairs. <laughs> 
You'd be so rich. Uh, sometimes members of the Scientology religion escape from one of the centres and they speak out against the religion, most of them claiming that if you disagree with the leaders, you're called suppressive. Uh, a suppressive person and you're put in a hole and they probably expected an international investigation but as this is suburban Little East Grinstead everyone here just goes oh dear <laughs> <laughs> about that big house up the road Jasmine says they've got a big hole up there for suppressing <laughs> not only that they play music all night the same bit over and over again and then you hear all these chairs scraping along the floor <laughs> Well, she called the council, but they don't do anything. <laughs> the Scientologists love East Grinstead. All through their promotional films, they say how well they get on with the community. There's a film of their kiddies' Easter egg hunt with hundreds of kids running around the grounds. Some of you have been to that, haven't you? No. no? I've seen the film. There's thousands of people there. They must have just got them all in from Turner's Hill or something. <laughs> And there were all these families on the film saying, oh, the kids have loved it. They've had a great time. How many eggs did you find? Five. Five. And what else did you see? I saw some people put in a hole. <laughs> Five eggs. Marvellous. <laughs> I saw one film made by an ex-member who said at St Hill they have a special zone plan to improve favourable image in the East Grinstead area. And this ex-member is very angry about the Scientologists now. He says the plan must be working because as well as the mayor turning on the lights, other councillors have praised the church for funding local charities. Someone who used to run this theatre said, I was overwhelmed by help from St Hill. It made such a difference to the running of Checker Mead Theatre. <laughs> That makes us all collaborators. <laughs> None of us can complain about all-night musical chairs. We're all here enjoying the fine carpets and exquisite decor of the theatre provided by thetans who've rid themselves of Zanu's ill spirit. <laughs> uh, I'm only joking. It's wholesome family entertainment here all the time at Checkmead Theatre. It goes further, this integrating with the local council. The previous mayor went to a film premiere with... Tom Cruise. What must that have been like? A Hollywood agent must have gone, hey, Tom, can you give me the name of your plus one for the film premiere? Or are, you, are you going with uh, Liam Neeson or uh, Kate Winslet? <laughs> no, I, I'm going with the mayor of East Grinstead. <laughs> Do we have, is, is Ian here? Is Ian here at all? Ian, hello. So you were a councillor in East Grinstead. I am a councillor in East Grinstead. You still Grinstead. are a councillor. Oh, I'm so sorry. So you're a councillor in East Grinstead. <laughs> Did you ever get sort of uh, invited up to the St Hill? I, I've had invitations, yeah. I did go around there once. I was census officer for the town in 2001. Went and banged on the door and told them they had to fill the forms out. <laughs> well, they're probably quite good at that. If they could do a billion-year contract, they could fill out the <laughs> census. <laughs> Presumably, like, people go round there and knock on the doors and say, uh, can we rely on your vote this Thursday and all that sort of thing? <laughs> I haven't been around there to knock on the door, but um, I think they're all on the electoral roll, yeah. Who do you think they vote for? <laughs> they, they didn't vote for me because I'm not <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that well I'm um, um, you know that's probably because you've uh, you've got bad spirits Ian uh, no it's because I live in Crawley Down so <laughs> I've run away from the ley lines <laughs> no come on Crawley Down's a great place <laughs> So it was that Councillor Ian Gibson lost all his votes in, <laughs> in a period of five seconds. Thank you very much, Ian. And, uh, and thank you for destroying my political career. <laughs> yeah. I'm like Emily Maitless, I am. <laughs> East Grinstead, of course, is about so much more than Scientologists. Does everybody know that there's a vineyard here? Yeah. Yeah. That's got altogether much more positive vibes. <laughs> Is Jamie here from the vineyard? Yeah. You all been to it? Yeah. Well, you should all come back, please. <laughs> so, uh, the first question, I, I, I don't know very much about wine at all. Is there a snobbery about English wine from the connoisseurs? Would they go, oh, that's not, it's not from France or Spain, or that's not proper wine, do you think? Uh, definitely. I think that uh, that's probably the biggest thing we're having to battle, is, is this idea of snobbery versus what people actually like to drink. 
And in, in several blind tastings, you find that even people in Champagne are preferring English wine over the Champagne. They just, they just don't know it. Yeah. That, Jamie, is why we had to have Brexit. <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> and do you do tours? Every week, about, yeah, five days a week. Do you find, like, people on those, those tours, are they people who are just sort of going, oh, we can get some free drink, or is it... <laughs> they are. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it's... It's, 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 <laughs> well, yeah. it's a real mixed bag, because sometimes you get people who really want to learn about wine and winemaking and things like that, uh, and then I've actually had a one-star review on TripAdvisor because we didn't give them enough free wine. <laughs> <laughs> they left sober, and they actually put a one-star review that they left the vineyard sober. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got to ask you this. Is it the whole of Sussex or is it just East Grinstead that's right for growing, uh, for having a vineyard? Oh, like, it... could you do it in Crawley or is that just... <laughs> oh, the soil out there and all the bloody aeroplane fuel that falls out the sky would ruin it all. Well, they, they just they, they just steal all the grapes, wouldn't they? Um... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, no, actually, the entire southeast of the UK, from about Devon to Kent, has this balance between Kimmeridge clay and chalk, and I've put everyone to sleep in the theatre, and I'm really happy about that. Uh, but it's the same soil base that they have in Champagne. So they did a geological survey back in the 80s and actually found out the soil was perfect for growing Champagne grapes. And everyone says it's global warming and climate change, and that is part of it. But actually, it's because we figured out that grapes care a lot more about the soil they're grown in than the temperature of the air, uh, per se. So. In ten years' time... English wine will we'll, we'll smash the French wine, and then after that, we can start on baguettes and snails. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much to Jamie, and thanks as well for being so brilliant on this one. Good King Wenceslas was written about, was written here. Oh, I love that you all know that. I asked someone here how they knew that it was written here, and they said, we get told. And, yes, in East Grinstead, when you're told something by your masters, you just accept it, don't you? It was written by John Mason Neal at Sackville College, and the original version uh, went, Good King Wenceslas looked out on the mini roundabout. <laughs> but he was told to make it more Christmassy. Led Zeppelin bought a house here and then they forgot, they, Led Zeppelin forgot that it was there. And the council wasn't going to give them permission to buy it at all at first. But when they heard they'd done a song called Stairway to Heaven, they thought it was a mad cult, so they changed their mind to let them in. <laughs> uh, opposite the Dorset Arms, a pub that I'm sure you all know, uh, is a bar called Goats, quite a new bar. And someone said that strange sign they put up has worried some people as they think it's Satanist. And I thought, you shouldn't be worried about that. You need them. They're the only ones you haven't got. <laughs> and then, of course, there is the beautiful Christian St Swithin's Church. Hardly anybody goes there because a religion founded on a virgin birth and a talking snake in a garden isn't nearly crazy enough. <laughs> See how mixed and diverse it is here in East Grinstead. It's more multicultural than New York. <laughs> it is genuinely, because you must have the only shop in the world that's a combined hardware and Indian snack store. <laughs> Because in the middle of the main road is the Sacred Heart Hardware Shop and Indian Snack Store for all those times when you desperately need a bowl of dal and a chisel. <laughs> and then up the road you've got Ashdown Forest, where which major literary figure lives? <laughs> Winnie the Pooh, there's a place called Pooh Corner that has a cafe and a museum called a Poohseum. While I was there, it's true, an American woman asked, uh, excuse me, can I just ask you, why can't I find Tigger's house on this map? And Kirsty, the manager, was so patient with her, and she said, oh, that's because Tigger was always round at Kanga's house, because Kanga used to feed him. And she went, oh, thank you, that makes so much sense. <laughs> And I thought, well, I don't know, but there is another reason I can think of why you can't find Tigger's house. He didn't exist! <laughs> because he's a drawing! 
yeah. And then there's another organisation that was founded here, possibly the most amazing of all, called the Guinea Pig Club. Yeah. Uh, Uh, and I love, I love that you all know the guinea pig club because East Grinstead was hugely important in the Second World War. Right. In the 1930s, there were only four plastic surgeons in Britain until Archibald McIndoe arrived from New Zealand. And the reason that there were so few is hardly anybody survived serious burns injuries. But now there were new ways of hydrating the body to keep people alive. So now they might survive but they would be hugely disfigured by the, the burns. And then Archibald McIndoe devised a new dressing for burns that was much softer and preserved the skin. And the Guinea Pig Club book describes it as loose weave soaked in paraffin and halibut oil if fish was available. <laughs> <laughs> I love that detail, like it was on a menu. <laughs> I will ask the surgeon if there's any halibut available, sir. <laughs> If not, we do have some very fresh Dover salt. <laughs> and then he, he came to the cottage hospital here, and according to the Guinea Pig Club book, Mackindoe's Army, the reason that the Plastic Surgeon Hospital was built in East Grinstead is Sir Harold Gillis, the First World War plastic surgeon, chose the town as it was halfway between his house and his golf club in Rye. <laughs> And yet that is the most sensible reason anything has ever been built here. <laughs> After the Battle of Britain, hundreds of burnt airmen were sent to the Queen Victoria Hospital here and Archibald McIndoe established Ward 3 as the plastic surgery centre for treating them. But it was revolutionary. He insisted that for the patients to recover, their mental state had to be as positive as possible. So he ordered that officers and lower ranks were treated together on the wards, which was so radical at the time. He insisted that there was always uh, a supply of beer and cigarettes in the ward. He wanted the ward, he said, to feel like a constant part Party. The guinea pig club demanded the matron must not mind when patients return from the nightclubs of London for breakfast. One patient, Harold Taubman, said, I woke up on the first day at East Grinstead. The patient in the next bed said, have a cigar. <laughs> Uh, the medical staff and patients called themselves the guinea pig club, toasting it with glasses of sherry. And one airman wrote that a matron came to the end of his bed one day and said, oh dear, this man has something missing. He needs a pint of beer. <laughs> and it sounds great fun. It's like Downing Street during lockdown. <laughs> it's, uh, it was the most exciting that the town has ever been. Uh, the most famous entertainers of the time, such as Tommy Trinder and Joyce Grenfell, did shows in the hospital. But the most radical measure that he took was that he insisted as soon as the patients could, they should, he said, be acclimatised to the people of East Grinstead. Now, that is a radical approach <laughs> to healthcare. So he called meetings in the town and he told everyone that they must welcome the burnt patients. He went into pubs and cafes all over the town. He warned people that the uh, burnt airmen were coming and it was vitally said that they were accepted normally. And, uh, he invited residents into the hospital so that they would get to know the patients, so the patients would stay positive about what life would be like once they left, confident that they wouldn't be stared at because of their injuries. And because of this, East Grinstead became known as the town that does not stare. And the whole town came together for this, which you should be immensely proud of as your part of the war effort, East Grinstead. Immensely proud, especially as your other notable wartime achievement is that someone from here organised festivals for Hitler. But... <laughs> LAUGHTER I didn't think I was going to stay nice to the end. <laughs> I would love to speak to Sue if she's here. Hi. Yep. Hello, Sue Bass from the from the museum. Correct. Yeah, we've got the collection that was housed at Queen Victoria Hospital, so it's now housed and documented at the museum. Yes. I've got to ask you this because if you speak to most people now about plastic surgery, they assume that you're talking about cosmetic things, lips, fillers, things yeah. of, you know to make yourself look younger and all that sort of thing. But that's. This, is, this was the, the beginnings of it, wasn't it? Yes, that's quite right. I mean, Queen Victoria Hospital has taken it on and done a lot of reconstruction surgery for, you know, um, head and neck cancers and things like that. So it's moved, you know, 
it, it's been built on, yes. So it must be, you must be sort of very proud telling people about that. And it's nice to have something. Yes, we're, we're, we're extraordinarily proud of um, it, it being a basis for um, a lot of modern surgery. And people do come, you know, people who are on courses at Queen Victoria Hospital come into the museum to look at the artefacts and things that we have. So there you are, like Scientology, Archibald <laughs> Mackindo. <laughs> what a mix and match, haven't you? Definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sue. It's lovely speaking to you. Thank you. There is now, as I'm sure you know, a, a statue of Archibald McIndoe in the centre of the town uh, looking after one of his patients. A lovely statue. The only thing that isn't accurate is that he doesn't have his glasses on in the statue. And I was told the reason for this is because it was believed that someone would steal the glasses <laughs> off the statue. What is the matter with you? <laughs> And then this hardly seems worth mentioning, as it's mainstream compared to most of the place, you've got a major temple of the Mormons. <laughs> Mormonism was founded, as I'm sure you've been told, by a farmer, Joseph Smith, who saw visions in the 1820s in New York. Visions of God and then of an angel called Moroni, who told him the location of a book containing the truth of God that was buried and made of golden plates. And Joseph couldn't move the plates as Moroni the angel stopped him. If it was in East Grinstead, you'd have swiped it and got it out. <laughs> I went to their temple. Have you been there? See, it's not like the other one. You can go round. It's so open. We just wandered around these vast grounds of pristine lawns and immaculately trimmed hedges. And I was looking for ages for someone to just go and talk to and couldn't find anyone. I thought, this is amazing. When they knock on your door, you can't get bloody rid of them. But when you're trying to find one, there's no one there. <laughs> And this very friendly man came out and told me how there's a font under the building where they baptise the souls of the dead and how Joseph Smith read the original scriptures in an ancient Egyptian, which he magically understood. And it was all so lovely. He was such a nice man. I thought, what nice religion. This is the one I'd join if I was here. And, <laughs> and then there's the people in Forest Row. <laughs> achievement of Forest Row is you think they're weird. <laughs> but, it sounds like the people of East Grinstead think it's one thing to have a secret castle where people abandon their families for a billion years to become a thetan, but at least they don't eat organic cheese and sing in the forest. <laughs> is anyone here from Forest Row? Yeah. You eat organic cheese and dance in the forest. <laughs> Everything here is different from what you'd expect. Tom Cruise sold the house he bought here to Peter Andre. <laughs> Who else lives here? Elvis, Batman. <laughs> East Grinstead is magical. Not because of the movements of the cosmos or visitors from other galaxies, but because it looks like it should be a town that prides itself on being uninteresting, where no one trusts anything slightly different, and people tell their neighbours, I saw a teenager outside I didn't know today, so I called the army. <laughs> But instead, you're a model of acceptance of other ways and views. You've learned to accept people who came into the town who may not appear like everybody else, and you still use those skills. Don't make the man feel uneasy just because he tried to reserve a table in Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> just accept him. And you've got Rosicrucians and Mormons and people who pay eight quid for a carrot because it comes in a bag made from llama droppings. <laughs> And you barely notice, so you're still the town that does not stare. So I will leave you, East Grinstead, with a story from Winnie the Pooh that has delighted children and adults, but is mostly a symbol of the beauty and the spirit of the town in which it was written. Pooh walked, walked, walked through Pooh Forest, singing a little song to himself. Why is it with bears that nobody stares when all night we're made to play musical chairs, he sang. <laughs> All of a sudden, Pooh and Christopher Robin heard a voice. Help, it went. Help. Look, said Christopher Robin, that poor lady has her bum stuck in some raining. 
So they pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and rescued her. How can I possibly reward you, she asked. I have nothing I can give you except this jar of expensive organic honey. (laughs) That's perfect, said Pooh, and the two friends sat on the grass for a feast. I have such wonderful days with you, said Pooh. How long will you love me for? asked Christopher Robin. A billion years, said Pooh. (laughs) And to prove it, he signed a contract. Thank you so much. Mark Steele's in town was written and performed by Mark Steele with additional material from Pete Sinclair.